In this video, we're going to take a look at the presidential polling biases for 2016. I already took a look at the biases for 2020, and they were pretty bad. For 2016, it was not as easy to use the same data as 2020. The averages of the polling aggregates were just not there. So the easiest thing for me to do to keep it consistent throughout all the states is use the polling averages from 538. So that's what I did for the averages. You could try to use some other sources like Real Clear Politics, but 538 seemed to have all the states. So we're going to compare that to the final margins. Now back in 16, the third party vote was more of a factor. So the 538 polling should account for this. But you never know, there could be a discrepancy or a mistake in here somewhere. There's a lot of numbers, but once I crunched them all, I put that polling bias number in for every state. So those numbers are not the electoral votes. That's how far off the polling was. And all of these numbers are rounded to the nearest whole number. Also keep in mind, some states are very dark blue or dark red. So those states might not have a ton of polls. Now, Whatever is there, it's going to be harder to get the polling accurate. This is most useful for the battlegrounds. So we're going to real quickly go through all the states. And this time, the darkest colors are going to be a six point or more bias. The next color down is going to be four to five points. Then we've got two to three points. The lightest colors are going to be a one point bias. You could call those the tilt margins. And none of these this time had zero points. But if they did, we would put those in purple. First, let's put in the states that were slightly biased toward Trump by one point. We'll start on the East Coast. We've got Connecticut. Connecticut and Rhode Island. Then we could head out west and hit up Colorado, Nevada, and Oregon. Now let's put in the states that had a 1% bias for Hillary. Starting in the east, we've got Maryland and Virginia. And the last state is going to be Georgia. That's a critical state. And just like in 2020, it had very little polling bias. So there's a good handful of states that had very little bias. You got a few for Trump. You got a few for Hillary. Let's step it up a little bit now to the states that had a 2-3 to three point bias. First for Trump at the northeast, we've got Maine's first congressional district. District. Then we've got a few more in this area. We've got New York, Massachusetts, and New Jersey. Then in the Midwest, we've got Illinois. In the Southwest, we've got New Mexico. And in the Northwest, we've got Washington. And I also don't want to forget about Nebraska's first congressional district. So some scattered states there that had a little bit overestimation of support for Trump. Now the states that overestimated Hillary by a two to three point margin. We've got Vermont, Delaware. Then we go to the Southeast and we've got Florida. Those polling averages did show Hillary in the lead. Of course, Trump went on to win it. West from there, we've got a huge state. It's Texas. And further west, we've got another battleground state of Arizona. All those states were decent, but a little bit of an overestimation for Hillary. Now let's go on to the states that start to become a little bit worse. These had a four to five point bias. For Donald Trump, he's got Nebraska's second congressional district. And then he's got one more. He's going to get the golden state of California. Now for the states that overestimated Hillary Clinton by four to five points. In the northeast corner, we've got Maine at large. Next door, we've got the Granite State of New Hampshire. Then into the Rust Belt, we've got two key states. We've got Pennsylvania and Michigan. Down into the Sun Belt, we've got North Carolina, then Mississippi. And the last state is going to be Louisiana. So those are the medium offenders. Now who are the worst offenders? All the rest of these states had an average polling miss of six or more points. First, let's do the bias for Trump. We've got two of them. We've got Hawaii and Washington, D.C. Those are both double digits. I don't think the safe states get a pass for being off by that much, but those are places that just don't really get a lot of polling attention. Now, the rest of these states all underestimated Trump and overestimated Hillary. Let's go east coast to west. First, we've got Maine's second congressional district. That underestimated Trump by about 10. Then we could go down the east coast to South Carolina, where Trump was underestimated by 7 points. West Virginia was 16 points. Ohio looked like it might be competitive, but that was a big miss of 7 points. Next door in Indiana, that was even bigger with 9 points. Kentucky had 12 points, Tennessee 16, Alabama 6. Back up into the Rust Belt, Wisconsin. It's a significant state with a significant polling error of 7 points. Minnesota and Iowa both had 6 points, Missouri 8. Arkansas, another 6. North Dakota, 12. South Dakota, 16. Nebraska, at large, 8 points. Nebraska's third, 9 points. 9 points in Kansas, 12 in Oklahoma. We've got 6 in Montana, 11 in Wyoming. Idaho had 13, Utah had 8 points, and Alaska, they had a 10-point miss in favor of Hillary. So those are all the states. None of them were spot on, and if you add up all those numbers, that comes out to 279 points in favor of Hillary, 61 in favor of Trump. So this election was notoriously known for underestimating Trump's support. It's always great to take a look at multiple polls, especially in the aggregate. I would even recommend taking a look at multiple aggregates, but this was a big blow for the polling industry. They 
definitely did not recover in 2020, but it does kind of blend in because in the end they were correct on the winner. But we also cannot forget about 2022. Those polls were mostly in the other direction where they underestimated support for Democrats. Now every election is unique and a midterm is not the same as a presidential election. I have no idea what's going to happen. The only thing I can say is that in the two elections that had Donald Trump on the ballot for president, both of those did considerably underestimate his support. You'd like to think they'd make adjustments and be able to get it close next time. Maybe they do. Maybe there's more hidden Trump vote out there that's not accounted for. Maybe there's an entirely new phenomenon that nobody sees coming. Plenty could happen, and I do recommend taking a look at some of the polling, but don't bank on it being this inaccurate again in 2024. It's going to be easy in hindsight to see where everybody went right or wrong. We'll find out what happens, but these are the 2016 presidential polling biases. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about this map? Are there any states in particular that jump out to you? Most likely, it's going to be the blue wall states and the Rust Belt. And what are you thinking? Pretty much what everyone else was thinking back in 2016, that Hillary was going to be winning this election. And how does this affect your perception of polling going forward? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.